We must mount a rebellion against the healing menace. And you've come to the right place. You know why? Because we're both here because we're sick and tired of healers running around getting free 35k burst deals and stacking as many healing over times as they can possibly imagine. You know, we're both sick of it. But do not worry, I have a solution to this problem, gamers. Behold. Um, the, the stamina magic hybrid it's definitely a high it's a hybrid night blade okay you know hybridization is still really weird right now and that's probably another reason why healing is out of control but do not worry this build is a solution to a problem you hear that zen max this build is merely a solution to a problem that you created and i'm simply fixing the things that you cannot fix Real quick, before we get into any more intro shenanigans, there are timestamps in the description if you would like to skip ahead or you just want to come back to the video because you want to make this build, okay? So the last time I updated this build was an entire year ago, in April of 2022. Now it's April 2023 and I am making this build video. And hopefully this build all of a sudden does not become a problem after being fine for an entire year because that would be really, really weird, especially when there are so many other bugs that need to be looked at first that are actually breaking the game as we speak and it would be very stupid for this build to end up staring down the executioner's barrel when the next update comes around because it is just simply a build that is a solution to a problem that has still not been fixed and that is the aggressive amount of healing and tanking that is going on in the game currently okay so go ahead Zenimax, martyr this build for me in the next update anyways this is version 3.0 of my I would call it a one-shot now, but I'm just going to start calling them gank builds since uh, we it's hard to get one-shots when people are so tanky. So, I guess version 3.0 of uh, my build from a year ago. And yes, this build is now a 1 out of 5 stars when it comes to its approachability rating simply because of how one-sided the build has become as a whole. It used to be we had plenty of sustain and survivability, but now we have zero sustain and almost no survivability. Our best survivability comes down to you as the player to make better decisions on how to use your cloak and your heals most effectively so you don't instantly get killed because this build has literally no resistances built in at all okay so it's got plenty of damage though it's got more than enough damage to take out a lot of players this patch and that is what i was going for with this build and i'm glad that we have something that can actually deal with all the tanking and healing that is going on recently and it's a blast to play once you figure it out it is a bit tough to use and don't get upset when you get killed because it's really easy to get upset when you get killed because it just seems unfair how quickly you die but you know that's just the price of making a build like this. So, yeah, this build is fun, but it takes a while to learn and get used to. So be aware of that if you're up for the challenge. And yeah, I mean, did I mention that this is a gank build? So, of course, it's going to be very soft and stuff. But, yeah, um, well, it's a gank build, okay? And I do have a montage for you guys. But I don't know how to transition into it. Um, you know that meme about uh, when the Doom soundtrack kicks in? Uh, yeah, yeah, let's try, let's try one of those.
Taking a look at our character sheet, we have 6 points into magic, 22 points into health, and 36 points into stamina. I have these distributed the way I do because we use every single resource on this build, so mainly stamina because we're going to be in stealth a lot, and it's very good to have that high pool of stamina. Well, relatively speaking, 20k isn't very high, but you know, we got a lot of damage, so yeah, this is what I got. And for those that care, these are the stats of the front bar unbuffed. These are the stats of the back bar unbuffed. These are the stats of the front bar moderately buffed. And these are the stats of the back bar moderately buffed. Do note that these numbers get much higher while you're in combat. For our race, we are a cat, obviously. Cat is by far the best choice for this kind of build. I can't see any other race working for this spec. Since we are a Khajiit, we get access to robustness, increasing all of our recoveries, lunar blessings, increasing our max stats, and feline ambush, increasing our critical damage and healing done by 12%, and uh, also making us a hide and seek pro. On this build, we are a vampire stage three. You have to be vampire stage three at, I'd say at least because of the passives that you get. We get access to dark stalker, which decreases the time it takes to get into sneak and also allows us to ignore the movement speed penalty of sneak. Strike from the Shadows, which grants us damage whenever we leave Sneak, which really pairs well with our combo that we're doing. And Undeath, you only get this at Stage 3. This gives us a 30% damage mitigation based off of our missing health. And for how soft we are, I cannot express to you how valuable this is as a passive. So, yeah, Stage 3, not negotiable. For our Mundus Stone, we are using the Shadow. This boosts our critical damage and healing by 15%. If you guys were catching my streams a while ago, you would have seen that I was using the uh, Atron Arc so I could get some more mag recovery. I instead decided to drop that because I went for more percentage-based damage just stacking on this build. And yeah, Shadow is, well, it gives us a really good results. So I would use Shadow on this. If you're a bit new to this and you're not super comfortable with it, go ahead and use the Atro. You'll find that you're gonna run out of magic a lot. And if that really, really bothers you, just use the Atro so you can get some more mag recovery. But I'm personally using the Shadow at the moment. For our consumables, we are using Jewels of Misrule. This gives us some maximum health and recovery for both our magic and stamina, which really does help out since we're pulling from each of those resources quite often. It's not going to fix your sustain issues, but it definitely helps and you will notice it. So this is the food that I would recommend using. And if you can afford it and you're rich, go ahead and use Orzorgas because it's just much better than this. For our potions, we are using the Essence of Health potions. This gives us a burst to every single one of our stats when we need it and some recoveries for each of those as well. This is created with one bug loss one columbine and one mountain flower and no we are not using any poisons on this build so on our front bar we have a battle axe of the red mountain with a shock enchantment it is sharpened if you don't know what the red mountain does basically it spawns a little volcano that launches a fireball at the nearest enemy and this set is really kind of weird one because it's really easy to dodge since it has a really big telegraph if you're paying attention and second sometimes it won't go to the target that you are currently ganking it'll just go to the guy right next to him it's like relative to where the volcano spawns but overall very reliable ish proc set and when it does hit it really does hit hard so it's a very good set to have on our back bar we have the vegetarian's great sword the absorb stamina enchant i just still haven't changed it i would put a weapon damage enchant on it if you can afford it but you know i'm lazy this is in defending defending isn't doing too much for us but you know it's it's better than nothing and if you don't know what this does uh, basically rally is getting more buffs and a proc so for our head we have balorg's mask meaning it's medium with a tri-stat enchantment this is well fitted this is here for the one piece of weapon and spell damage that it gives to us for our chest we have a jack of the red mountain with a stamina enchantment this is well fitted you could put a tri-stat on this but you know i'm lazy and you know i don't want to pay 100k for it so for our shoulders, we have Flame Blossom Epaulets with a magic enchantment. These are Divines. This is our second set. This set is starting to become a lot more mainstream. As you guys know, we've been running this forever, and um, you can't dodge it. You can't block it. The only thing you can do is move out of the way of it. It's really reliable damage, and it really does pair well with the rest of our combo, and that's why we're using it. For our belt, we have a Flame Blossom Sash with a magic enchant. It is Divines. For our gloves, we have Flame Blossom Gloves with a magic enchant. These are Divines. For our legs, we have Flame Blossom Britches with a magic enchant. These are divines. Again, you could do a tri stat here, but I like the extra magic that this gives so I can cloak more often. For our shoes, we have Flame Blossom Shoes with a magic enchantment. These are divines. For our necklace, we have a necklace of the Red Mountain with a weapon damage enchantment. This is infused. For our first ring, we have Ring of the Red Mountain with a weapon damage enchantment. This is infused. 
And for our second ring, we have the Ring of the Wild Hunt with a weapon damage enchantment, and this is Swift. A lot of people don't seem to like this mythic item, but I really, really enjoy it because one, it really helps us keep up with the target that we're trying to hunt down. And second, if things do get really bad, this gives us the movement speed capabilities to get away from an engagement that we just don't want to be in. And I think it's really underrated, especially the movement speed. And on a ganker like this, where you already have like minor expedition because of Veiled Strike, it just... A lot of movement speed is more helpful than people realize, but if you really feel like you want to push it even further, I guess go ahead and use the Mark and Ring of Majesty, but this is my personal preference, and this is staying on the build. I picked a Battle Axe because of the crit damage that it gives to us. Obviously, from the Heavy Weapons passive, we get 12% more crit damage with a Battle Axe equipped, and also we have a sword on the back, so that way we can get some additional healing power out of it. Because if you didn't know, your healing scales off of the higher of your weapon and spell damage, and swords just give you weapon and spell damage, so, yep. Yeah. Alright, for the fun part of the build, our skills. On our front bar, our first ability is Killer's Blade. This is our execute ability, and this is our combo finishing move as well. And I've seen this thing crit for up to 26k before, and it's just very, very dangerous. It's pretty easy to dodge since, uh, you know, that's the first thing people do once they break free. But if you do manage to get a kill with it, it also gives you a nice heal. So it's a plus, 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 and you need it on the build. For our next ability, we have Camouflaged Hunter. This can pull Nightblades and stuff out of stealth, but we're mainly using it because while it's slotted, we get extra crit chance. And also, hitting someone from behind gives us Minor Berserk. And uh, yeah, I'll talk about the synergy we got going on with our skills more in the combat stuff section. For our next ability, we have Wrecking Blow. This, with this recent change, now gives us Major Berserk. And um, the Empower is not important, but... We come out of stealth with this ability and it hits super, super hard and empowers the rest of our entire combo after we come out of stealth. So you need it on the build, okay? For our next ability, we have Concealed Weapon. This is our spammable. I prefer to use this over Wrecking Blow when we're caught out of stealth and also just, you know, following up a Wrecking Blow attack from stealth because when you leave stealth, you get another 10% damage and also while it's on your front bar, you just get minor expedition so you can move really, really fast so you can keep up with people. Next up, we have Merciless Resolve, the very famous bow proc. Basically, whenever this is active, every time you light or heavy attack, you get some stacks, and at five stacks, you can fire a spec bow that removes people from the gene pool, and it it's very, very strong. And, uh, I, I mean, you've probably been hit by this plenty of times this patch. For our ultimate, we have Soul Harvest. Um, this, I mean, this is a great ultimate. I pick Soul Harvest over Incap because one, I don't like fighting the ultimate cost once it gets to about 120 because then it takes my ultimate away at the absolute worst possible time. And second, this also afflicts the enemy with Major Defile. And most of the time I use this build to target healers specifically since they're the toughest to kill most of the time. And since we can do it in one combo, we get 20% damage against them. They take 16% less healing, and then they have to deal with everything else that this build has to offer for like six seconds, and they'll be dead by that point. And also you get 10 ultimate every time you get a kill, so it really lets you charge these things back up really quickly, because you will be getting kills with this build. On our back bar, we have Race Against Time. This ability allows us to run super fast and gives us some bonus crit damage. On top of that, it also gives us immunities to snares and immobilizations for four seconds. So yeah, we use this um, I'll spam this a bit too much, but you know, it's 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 there and it's very useful. If you don't have this, you can use Phantasmal Escape. However, you won't get the major expedition, and uh, you do get a free roll dodge, I guess. So, for our next ability, we have Resolving Vigor. This is here as a heal over time. I mean, if you're caught out of stealth and things are getting kind of rough, this is the first thing that you're going to use to try and heal yourself so you can stay alive. And plus, right now it gives you minor resolve, which is just you know another benefit. But yeah, we have this here so we can stay alive. Our next ability, Leeching Strikes, this is our sustainability. Activating this allows us to store up a pool of like stamina. So once it expires, we get a burst of stamina back. And also our light and heavy attacks heal us for a little bit. I mean, it doesn't do too much for our healing, but you know, it's there. For our next ability, we have Rally. You know how I feel about this skill, at least you should. Basically, it gives us damage, recovery, and it's a burst heal on top of that. And it gives us access to the Vegetarian's proc, I mean, Vegetarian proc. It's just a very loaded skill and it's a uh, very good buff next we have shadowy disguise the infamous cloak okay this makes you invisible and your next attack coming out of stealth with this while you're at least invisible will be a critical strike we use this to get away from people we use this to get on people so we can kill them and yeah it's uh look 
it's night blade. You have to you have to kind of run this because this is our only survivability tool. For our back of our ultimate, we have Soul Tether. This is just here as if we're caught outnumbered. So there's like four or five people on us. We're really soft and we somehow don't manage to die in one second. We just pop this and then immediately go into stealth and then run away. Um, and that's basically what it's here for is the, oh no, there's like 20 people trying to zerg me down. And this kind of helps you get away from them. I mean, it does have a 0.5 second cast time, which is stupid because Soul Harvest has a 0.4 second cast time. I don't know why this defensive ultimate needs to have a cast time when something like the Resto ult is an insta cast time and same with Spell Wall, but you know, we can't use this defensively instantly. So, you know, there's that and just Zenimax being weird. And make sure you fill out all of your passives, okay? And quick note, when filling out the Sigic Order skill line, um, do not put any points into Spell Orb because I don't think you want to be getting pulled out of stealth every six seconds because a random Spell Orb charge goes off and hits somebody and then you just get detected all the time. So don't put anything into here so you can stay invisible. For our champion points, in the role player tree, we have Meticulous Disassembly, Master Gatherer, Plentiful Harvest, and Steed's Blessing. And maybe you should take a look at this little passive right here. I, I think it's kind of useful, you know. In the sweaty tree, we have Fighting Finesse, Deadly Aim, Master at Arms, and Untamed Aggression. We're going full damage with this thing. For the potato tree, we have Celerity, Survival Instincts, Slippery, and Sustained by Suffering. Make sure when you're filling out Mystic Tenacity, you only put 10 points into it so you can suffer longer. So that means you get more benefit out of this and this and make sure you fill out all your little golden stars as well but prioritize getting those passives if you don't have enough cp we'll talk about the combat stuff in a section but i want to make it clear that if you guys have any questions about the build do not hesitate to ask me in the comments i will answer them welcome to the combat stuff section of the video if you have no idea what this section is well basically what we do is we talk about the build we look at the rotation and i just give you some general tips and pointers on how to properly play this build so you don't walk into any situation with your head cut off like uh you know a chicken or whatever before we talk about anything else you need to understand the mechanics of stealth itself so what i'm talking about is in order to get the combo off that we're looking for and get the stun from stealth and all that you need to be in crouch mode okay so you need to crouch and you need to see the little eye in the middle of your screen go into a flat line and it says hidden above it okay you need to be in crouch mode and then you can get the combo to go off because if you just cloak and you're just invisible and you're not actually crouching you're not going to stun your target with the combo from stealth it's just not going to work and you're also not going to get a 0.3 damage multiplier Ooh wee that's a ooh. it got nerfed but you know it's it's more than it's more than nothing so um yeah so make sure you understand how this works so crouch okay wait till the eye says hidden and then you can use your cloak sneak up behind your opponent and then pull the combo off okay that, that's basically all you need to know about stealth and also if you go in front of your target and try and pull off the combo they're not going to get stunned at all so you want to be on either the sides or behind your target and the best place to be is directly behind your target just try and get behind your target or at least where their character is facing before you pull the combo off now for the combo we have a few ways that you can go about approaching things, and uh, I, I like to spice it up from time to time, but the two primary combos that you're going to use are one is when you have your ultimate ready, and the other one is if you don't have your ultimate ready, but you still see like a nice opening on somebody who's just kind of being an idiot and leaving themselves exposed. So the first combo is the one without the ultimate. What you want to do is, of course, buff up, make sure you're in crouch mode, go into stealth, get behind your opponent, and then you open with a wrecking blow, light attack, veiled strike, and then you would use your killer's blade um, if by that point they didn't break free and roll dodge. But if all that lands at the same time, you should be able to take out like a 32, 34k health target if, you know, things crit and everything goes right. And then for the bigger targets in the better combo that, you know, takes even more health, what you do is you do the same thing. Go into stealth, make sure the ice is hidden, sneak up behind your opponent after you're buffed, and then open with a wrecking blow, light attack, death stroke, and then light attack killer's blade or you can do a light attack veiled strike if they're even more tanky and you know you're going to need a little bit of extra oomph so yeah so and of course whenever you see your spec bow is ready always make sure to work that into the combo so you always want to follow that up after your wrecking blow or your in cap so that way you can maximize the amount of damage that you'll be doing with it and the combo is the easiest part of the build once you understand that 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 is literally the easiest part now we get to the fun and hard part okay so First off, your sustain. 
Your sustain is very, very bad since we have not put literally anything into it. You could put the Atro on if you find your sustain is too bad and you still can't manage it and spamming potions still isn't enough, but you'll lose like 15 to 16% more damage and that can be the difference between getting somebody to like 3k health and killing them outright. So, you know, that's, that's your decision. And I just like to go for the full damage anyways because I tend to be better at, you know, conserving my resources, but not all the time. And uh, yeah, your sustain is very, very tough on this build. You'll find yourself just sitting behind a lot of group fights, just waiting for your resources to come back before you go in and engage again. And, uh, you know, when you do engage, you do most likely probably going to get a kill. But, you know, then you have to wait a little bit to get another one. And, you know, you just just need to not spam your abilities as often as you normally would because your sustain is not really going to back you up on that. So, you know, there's that. When it comes to surviving and not getting killed, so say someone sees you and your gank has failed and now you gotta do something to not die, you're just gonna use your vigor, okay? And you're gonna see your rally and see if that needs, if, if you need to use your rally, you use it and then you just cloak and then you just run away. Because there's literally nothing, you can't, you can't do anything. You have to run away, okay? That, that is, that is at most you can survive and hopefully running away does not cost you all of your resources because if you get stunned, if you, if you get, it's, it's over, okay? But by that point, you should have at least like five kills because the build hits really, really hard. So, you know, it has that kind of counterplay. It's uh, if you can catch it and wear it down, it's 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 going down because it's got no armor and no sustain, but it's got a lot of damage. And that's just how we have it built. And, you know, yeah, for the most part. And also, don't be stupid, okay? If you want to survive, don't just run into a four-man group and expect to gank, like, two or three of them, because that's not going to work. Wait till someone is a little bit of a straggler and is a little bit further away from the crowd and pick them off and then just do that one at a time, okay? So you don't actually get killed, because if you if you pick really bad targets to try and gank or, you know, you just get unlucky and you get desynced and a bunch of lag happens um, while you're trying to do your gank and you know you just so happen to be close to a group it's game over okay so make good decisions on who you decide to gank and also make sure you're fully buffed so that way you can get as much damage out there as possible in the shortest amount of time so you can limit the amount of incoming damage that you will receive because you best bet in belief the second you come out of stealth you're gonna be hit with all sorts of strange abilities that you never even saw coming so yeah be careful that's that's the best i could say so the playstyle of this build is definitely much more like your typical ganker because you have to be much more reserved and be a little bit more cautious about what you're doing. And also, you need to be careful because I found myself getting giddy. Okay, what I mean by that is I get excited right before I'm about to gank somebody because I'm expecting to just absolutely nuke their health bar. So then I end up going too fast with my rotation and then things start missing and then I just fail the entire combo and people don't die. And that happens a lot when I'm trying to, you know, gank somebody like my friend. I'm like, oh boy, this is going to be funny. He he, he's not going to expect it and then I just go too fast and then I just fail my abilities and things don't cycle properly because I get too excited and uh, you just got to be careful about that too because I don't know what it is it's like it's like a little adrenaline dopamine whatever rush uh, when you're behind an, an opponent and you got your full combo ready to go you just breathe you just need to you just need to remember to breathe okay I know it's a game but look you just still need to remember to breathe take it slow and still make sure everything in your combo lands because this game is really buggy your target's probably going to end up being out of range at some point during the combo one of your abilities is not going to fire you'll press the button you'll swear you press it but it's still not going to go off and then uh, you'll try and you know finish them off but by that point they'll be roll dodging you know to the moon and back and then they'll just turn around and one tap you and it's just not very fun so you, you got to be a lot more cautious and don't get too excited when you're trying to gank somebody i mean yeah don't go too hard with this build because it's not designed for that it's just designed to get you some kills and actually push through people's healing this patch because of how ridiculous it is and uh yeah and one more thing i will say it's about cloak um this takes a little bit of time to develop but uh it's called uh misdirection okay so basically what you do is watch just watch the clip okay and i'll uh, look okay so i cloak and i walk in this direction right and my friend here, he thinks I'm going to come around this way to get him. But actually, I just turn around and I hit him from the side with my combo, even though he thinks I'm going to come from the front here. So, you know, yeah, that, that's like a misdirection. Just work on that. And I think uh, you'll have a lot better chance of surviving and getting kills. OK, and then one final thing I want to talk about why the build works the way it does. So. So, yeah, here we are on, you know, uh, the, 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 the game. OK, uh, I just want to talk about 
why the build works the way it does and what we're doing exactly so for this build specifically we're building for a bunch of percent damage modifiers simply because we have access to so many of them now we get one from concealed weapon which is 10 percent when we leave stealth now we get one with wrecking blow we get major berserk so this is why we open up with this ability and hitting someone from behind we get five percent more damage because of minor berserk and also on top of that, if we hit someone with our soul harvest, they take 20% more damage from us. So these th these four skills grant us a 45% damage bonus against the targets that we're hitting. So on top of that, we have our 61% crit chance that goes up to 71 when you're buffed. And uh, yep, you have your weapon damage and pin and all that other stuff on top of that. But basically we're stacking percent damage modifiers. And that is why we are hitting so hard percent damage damage modifiers in combination with our proc sets and just our general combo makes us uh, kind of a menace when we're ganking somebody and it's a lot of fun but it's one of the only things one of the very 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 few builds that can actually push through healing because of the amount of burst that it has because healing as you know is extremely 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 high right now and anyone with any sort of burst heal can easily get like a 15 22k burst heal just by pressing one button and uh, we can't even do that with one single attack. Maybe our execute and maybe spec bow, but I mean, th that's pretty close, but this is the one thing that can push through that because while they're stunned, they got to take some damage from this combo. So it's a little harder for them to recover, but yeah, we're stacking a bunch of percent damage modifiers with this build. So basically, you know, so you're in stealth, right? So when you leave stealth, you get your veiled strike buff. You come out of stealth with wrecking blow, you get major berserk and you're behind your target you get minor berserk so 25 percent more damage and if we want to empower the combo even further so say we're about to kill a healer in cap on top of that means we're doing 45 percent more damage to our target on top of our 71 percent crit chance and that is why we are able to absolutely destroy people with this build it is a lot of fun to play and like i said one of the very few things that can actually push through healing this patch and Hopefully it doesn't go anywhere because there are so many other things that need to be reworked first before this build needs to even get looked at because Zenimax, I'm merely just making a, I'm, I'm just, this is a solution to an ongoing problem right now, okay? That is what this build is, so, you know, yeah, that's what we're doing on this build and that's just why it's hitting so hard. And yeah, this build is a blast to play, and it does have counterplay where your procs do have to travel to the target, and most of the time people will CC break by that point and just begin spamming roll dodge, and normally what you want to do at that point is just wait for their roll dodge to finish, and then you just hit them with a killer's blade that normally works, but uh, then you have some people that just hold block and spam a burst heal and get 35k health instantaneously with the press of one button, and then... Yeah, and then you gotta then you gotta try again. But you know, that's just the state of ESO at the moment with how high healing is. So we need high damage to counter it. And it's and it's and it's very close. It's it's close enough. Um yeah. Hopefully this part helped you out and you know how to play this build a lot better. But yeah guys, that has been my Nightblade build for Describes a Fate DLC, and hopefully this build does not change at all, and uh, if it does, please check the description for some hammers, if there's like a lot of hammers, and that means the build has been nerfed, if there's like one hammer, then the nerf is not very bad. And yeah, if you've watched the video this far, then that means you enjoyed the video, and therefore you have to subscribe, okay? If you subscribe, you also become a certified gamer, okay? It is what it is, I don't make the rules, alright? And if you think you're subscribed, please check. YouTube has been unsubscribing people and unchecking the bell notification for random people on my channel. And it's getting very, very annoying because YouTube is acting weird again. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and have a good night.